If I told you that this week's episode of Wednesday Night Smackdown included, oh, I don't know, a great match between Roman Reigns and The Miz and the debut of my potentially new favorite tag team, you'd say I was nuts, wouldn't you? What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Rally Check, with another Wednesday night SmackDown review. SmackDown, and everybody said, you know, they'll do one good show to uh, celebrate it being on a different night, and uh, it'll just go back to business as usual. SmackDown is pretty damn badass. I know I haven't done it in the past couple of weeks because I did my collab with Connor and I did Ask the Phoenix and I've told you guys on those weeks where those major things are happening, SmackDown's going to go to the back burner, but SmackDown's a lot of fun. SmackDown's got a lot more in-ring action and SmackDown's got a little less um, bells and whistles and so forth. Sorry guys, I'm tired. I got watching SmackDown late. Um, it's way past ridiculous o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to drag a little bit. I'm going to have a little bit of my drink here. And we're going to move on. Start off with Miz TV. Miz and the Miz Dow, obviously. Miz Dow uh, out on the side now because he's not the stunt double anymore. He's just the assistant. And the Miz is going to have the main event stars from the Fast Lane main event on uh, on Miz TV tonight. He comes in. He shits on Damian Miz Dow for being a shitty. Uh, for being a shitty assistant, hypes up the Bryan versus Roman match at Fastlane and introduces Daniel Bryan to Roman Reigns. Before anybody can say anything else, Roman Reigns meets Miz with a Superman punch on his way into the ring, turns his attention to Daniel Bryan and starts telling some truth. You're trying to slide in and take a spot that you don't deserve. It's my spot. I beat 29 other guys. And what's he looks at Daniel Bryan and says, well, what would be one more? Um, we all know I'm going to beat you at Fastlane, so why not wait? Let's do it tonight. They're about to go at it. They start chucking the Miz TV chairs out, etc. Rollins and J&J security interrupt. Looks at Brian, says, I would have beat you on Monday night if it wasn't for Roman Reigns, which is true. Roman, you sucker punched me because you're a coward. Um, <laughs> don't know if that's as true, but he says, I'm on a roll. I brought back the authority. I broke Brock Lesnar's rib at the Rumble, and I have the future in the palm of my hands, obviously holding up the money in the bank briefcase. He, he announces that tonight, per the order of the authority, Daniel Bryan is going to face J&J security. Dot, dot, dot. And Seth Rollins puts a big smile on my face. We get the debut, as I said in my little intro there, of potentially my new favorite tag team. And I'm going to call them Zigback just because I can. Dolph Ziggler and Ryback versus Gold and Stardust. They come out together like a team. Dolph's got a weightlifting belt like Ryback's and it says the little guy. Oh yes, a gimmick that he's pulling off in one night better than Curtis Axel ever did when they were a legitimate tag team. Ryback dominates Stardust to start an atomic drop and a sorry. Ryback and Dolph Ziggler hit an atomic drop drop kick combo. Ziggler works on Stardust's arm. Slam and a splash by Ryback on Stardust. Double elbow by Ryback and Ziggler. Elbow drop by Ziggler, splash by Ryback. Goldust tags in double and uh, he and Stardust start double teaming. Ryback Stardust steps on Ryback's face because he's a bad guy and that's, and that's okay. We like that. We like when bad guys actually do bad things. Front face lock by Goldust, Ryback tosses Goldust out of the ring. Stardust uh, tries to interrupt uh, whatever Ryback's going to do next by jumping off the top rope. Ryback meets him with the shot in the gut on the way down. And he falls like it's grim death, taking lessons from uh, Ziggler at the Rumble, which I like. Ziggler with a drop kick, a splash, and a running elbow on Stardust. Ziggler hits the jumping DDT. Stardust comes back with the disaster kick, which, no matter what gimmick he's in, is still a beautiful, beautiful move. Stardust tags Goldust, but he tags him with a hard shot to the chest and bails out of the match, building that tension. Love it. Super kick and a shell shock, and Ziggler and Ryback get the win. Now... Ryback has been in already one weird tag team with Curtis Axel. It didn't quite work. Ziggler should be in the title picture, so I shouldn't like this. But if Ziggler and Ryback are a thing, if this is a tag team that lasts for a little... Okay, obviously it won't go in the long run. But in the short term, Zigback could be a fun team. I can't believe I'm saying that because I, more than most, or at least as much as most, want Ziggler in to, to be in a prominent spot in that in that main title picture. 
but if this is uh, his next, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to say stumbling ground, but next hurdle, next thing he does to build himself up some more, uh, build the story with the Authority or whatever they're trying to do, because they did do a promo before this match about the Authority. The Authority keeps throwing things at us ever since we've been back, just, uh, you know, whatever you try to throw at us, it's too bad, I'm too good, feed us more, and so on and so forth. <laughs> the next match is Ambrose versus Axel, and we see a replay from Raw with Axel and his delusions of Royal Rumble slash WrestleMania glory. He cuts a shitty promo. He talks about how he was never eliminated from the Rumble. He says he wants Axel Mania to trend worldwide. The whole time, the crowd is chanting quite audibly, you're not perfect. I like that a lot. They uh, Ambrose comes out, they brawl for a little while, they trade shots in the corner, uh, slamming a beat down by Ambrose. Axel sits Ambrose on the ropes and elbows him in the back of the head twice. It's like he's sitting, he's using the second rope as a chair and facing out into the crowd. Ryback, or sorry, not Ryback, Axel comes off the opposite rope, elbows him in the back of the head twice. It looks pretty dirty because then he throws him down in on, on, the, on the ring floor. So it's two shots to the head and then a shot to the head on the way down. So three in a row, not a good time to be Dean Ambrose. Several elbows to Dean Ambrose's face. Tosses Ambrose out of the ring, beats down Ambrose on the on the commentator's desk. Ambrose comes back with a clothesline, a corner splash, and a bulldog by Ambrose. A perfect plex is countered into the uh, the slingshot clothesline that Ambrose does, where he actually goes between the ropes before he comes back. Um, dirty deeds, and Ambrose gets the win. Bad News Barrett shows up on the Titantron with a logo behind him that's a mock-up of the TMZ logo, and it's BNZ. It's the Bad News Zone, which which makes me smile. He says, you're a deranged vagrant of a star just using me to, and to make yourself relevant. You're way too crazy to get an Intercontinental title shot. He, actually, he doesn't actually say, I'm afraid I've got some bad news, which is, I think, what everybody was waiting in the promo, because the crowd was quiet the whole time, but then it's SmackDown and crowd noises alter, so you never, you never really know. In what I thought was going to be a snoozer, and ended up not being too bad, Fandango took on Adam Rose. Adam Rose came to the ring with the Rosebuds, which, you know, he's downplaying them and whatever, but he goes to do the trust fall off the ropes, and they drop him. Um, he beats up all of the rose, but something about seeing a guy in a hot dog suit getting kicked in the nuts just makes me smile because I'm a bad person. Fandango takes the opportunity though to uh, grab Adam Rose, hit him with a nice side slam to start the match, pounding on Rose, corner chops and a running elbow. Rose stomps Fandango in the corner, Rose back suplexes uh, Fandango on the frame of the ring. Rose then takes some more time to yell at the Rosebuds because he's an idiot, uh, leaving him open to a leg lariat from Fandango, followed by the last dance, which is apparently what they're calling that top rope leg drop that Fandango does. Fandango wins the match. Fandango didn't look too bad in this match. I know people don't like Fandango. I know they don't like the reimagined Fandango with the Spanish, sort of like the, 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 the old gimmick from Dirty Dancing with Rosa Mendez. Um has a lot of holes you can poke in if you want to, but the guy's solid in the ring, and so is Adam Rose once the Rosebuds get out of the way, so it's all good. Miz, I, I forgot to mention earlier, called out Ro uh, Roman Reigns for ruining Miz TV, saying he tried to destroy my moneymaker, he tried to create his own publicity stunt, so I'm calling Roman Reigns out tonight. And I thought, <laughs> I like Roman Reigns, and Miz is my boy, you guys know that. I thought that this would be the most amusing squash in the world. More amusing still is the fact that it wasn't. Um, Miz comes down, cuts a promo, talks about how he's going to teach Roman a lesson or some, some healy thing like that. Roman comes in from the crowd, he makes it up to the apron, and Miz attacks him off the apron, beats him down outside the ring and throws him into the steps. Roman sells it because he's not Daniel Bryan. The match actually starts. Miz beats down Roman in the corner, elbow to the temple, and starts a mud hole stomp. Roman comes back with a clothesline and some mud hole stomping of his own. Roman use, uh, has a standing headbutt, a shoulder tackle, Roman uh, clotheslines Miz outside. Miz with a knee to the head and a boot to the head, and then some mounting punches, and then a kick to the head again while Roman Reigns is sitting in the ring. Miz picks him up only to nail that nice 
really nice, I don't know what they're actually calling it, but that nice back and neck breaker combination that he does. Miz rides a headlock because he's a bad guy. Miz even hits him with a kitchen sink, you know, good old knee to the gut. Roman comes back with four clotheslines. A clothesline, two clotheslines in the corner, and another standing clothesline in succession. Miz tries for that from the knees DDT, which is also a brilliant looking move that Roman blocks twice and then counters into the Samoan drop. Superman punch, spear, Roman Reigns gets the win. What I've said here, does not nearly do this match justice. I know it's not popular to like Roman Reigns right now. I know it's been a long ass time since it's been a popular thing to be a fan of The Miz. If you can put that aside, if you can put those views on the shelf, if you can tear those pages out of the YWC rulebook for one night, go back, watch this match with open eyes. It's better than you expect. Is it match of the year? No, I will admit that. But it's better than I expected, and I like both these guys. If you watch it with an honest set of eyes, I promise you it'll be better than you think it is when I say Roman Reigns versus The Miz. That's all. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna berate it anymore. Rusev versus Eric Rowan in a rematch from Raw starts out with a slugfest. Boot by Rowan, body tackle by Rowan, splash by Rowan, insiguri by Rusev. Near fall, turns it into a headlock immediately. Rowan veals Rusev across the ring. Rowan hits a corner splash and a 10 punch. Uh, Rusev picks himself up pretty much immediately. Super kick, accolade, Rusev gets the win. Quick, fast, kind of slow, mo uh, fast in length, slow in the movement in the match, if, if that makes sense. It was a fast, or it was a slow, quick match. Uh, for two big guys that, left to their own devices, are not the most exciting in the world, I will admit. But um, it is what it is. It goes along with the story. Rusev is part of the uh, Rusev is part of the authority agenda, and Rowan is part of the anti-authority agenda. So it it continues the story. It's it's kind of loose. It's kind of just here. Two big guys go do your thing. But it's not horrible. Rowan isn't horrible. Rusev is is being built like a monster to go face John Cena at Fastlane, which is awesome. Um, it did its job. Did it set the show on fire? No, but it absolutely did the job. Paige cuts a promo and the bell is in the back talking to Renee Young, talking about how they're cookie cutter and she's not, and Roddy, Roddy, raw. And they talk about what happened on Raw, ironically enough. And then we have Paige versus Alicia Fox, and it, it, it goes a lot like the, uh, the Rowan and, uh, Rusev match, if I'm honest. Paige with a Thez press, Paige with a super kick, a beat down by Paige in the middle of the ring. Alicia tosses her out of the ring, and I don't mean just like takes her and like sort of pushes her over the ropes. Basically, lifts her, deadlifts her, and drops her through the ropes, fully. And it, it it looks the way she takes the fall makes it look really really dirty. Gets her back in the ring. Northern Lights suplex with a bridge and a near fall. Alicia Fox, say whatever else you want about her, she's getting better, and that bridging uh, Northern Lights suplex that she does is pretty. Alicia Fox rides a headlock for a while. Multiple clotheslines and another super kick by Paige leads to the PTO, which, to go with the theme of the night, is another really gorgeous move, and Paige gets the win, of course, because it's Paige. Wyatt comes out with another promo that we all assume is directed at The Undertaker, and I've written down, once again, as much as I can. A man is defined by his actions, but I am no man. I am everywhere. I am everything. I am a spirit. I am the Reaper. What makes you think that you are immune to me? Maybe you think your sins don't count. The eyes of a fool are blinded by pride. The devil is knocking at your door. He wants you to come home, so let him in. Let me in. Um, again, it's a Wyatt promo, so it goes without saying that I did not do that any justice at all. But, um, in fact, I might... If we do get what we all think we're getting, I might just go from last week's SmackDown to WrestleMania and piece these promos together and just do one large collaboration as sort of a tribute to this match. It could be fun. Brian versus Rollins and J&J Security is the main event. Now, I didn't do step-by-step -step notes for this, but I do have bullet points. I will tell you what this match was. Brian beats up the Stooges. Yay really, really good, and listen to me give some credit to Daniel Bryan here, really, really good action between Bryan and Rollins. When it is Bryan and Rollins, numbers game is played well because we have to put all the sympathy on poor Daniel Bryan. Of course, as has been the stable since his return, we work the head a lot, and he no-sells it even less. To the point of, once again, 
flipping the bird to anybody that pays attention to psychology, leading with headbutts, leading with suicide dives, and basically no selling everything. The one thing I do like in this, the psychology of Roman Reigns getting in Brian's face uh, with, with comments like, you think you know what it's like to be in the main event, welcome to the deep end, you think you have what it takes to take on Lesnar at Wrestlemania, let me show you what it's like, and Rollins starts popping Germans like a motherfucker, like Lesnar did to both he and Cena at Royal Rumble, I like that, that's a nice, nice little bit of psychological storytelling, you think you can go you know, face to face with Brock Lesnar. Let me show you how it's done. Let me show you what it's going to be like if you make it that far. Um, because there's silly fans in the crowd, I'm sure, we get some Daniel Bryan silly kicks for the Stooges. And then Joey Mercury taps out to the, uh, the yes lock for the win. So Daniel Bryan's big victory is no selling every bit of offense from the match and making a non wrestler tap out. Bryan gets the win. Kane comes down because wrestling. They beat the crap out of Daniel Bryan, put a big smile on my face, show ends with a curb stomp, and I'm a happy camper. Oh, yes. SmackDown is getting to be a lot of fun. SmackDown, um,. I, I'm, I'm almost willing to say we're going back to the Paul Heyman era where SmackDown actually has better matches than Raw, at least longer matches. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with these. I know uh, I got some pretty good response from the first SmackDown review I did. Um, I, I know a lot of people think I'm a dick for posting the reviews on Wednesday when, the Mer when America doesn't get uh, the SmackDown at all until Thursdays, but I can't, uh, I can't help when, you know stuff is on. That is not within my power, but what is within my power is to remind you guys, Ask the Phoenix, uh, you guys have roughly 20 more days to get me questions for the February edition of Ask the Phoenix. If you have fast lane specific questions that you want me and Connor to answer in tackle, put them in the comment section of any one of my videos with the hashtag S. P -O -K. I want to thank you guys once again for hopping on board with my fan interaction series that just started two weeks ago. I've got one coming up this Friday. I think you guys will be able to sink your teeth into it a lot. The research that went into it on my part was helped by Guapo from the uh, from the Wrestle Recap crew, so thank you to him once again. Um, this has been SmackDown, and because SmackDown's only two hours long, the review is only about 16 minutes. I've been Spaz, your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I'm tagging out. Bye, guys.